Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our latest webinar, New Transient Line Source, presented by ThermTest. I'm Angela, your moderator for today's session. Today, we will discover revolutionary advances in measurement and calculation using the TLS-100 needle instrument. Gain insights into the instrument, sample requirements, and witness a practical example of the new calculation approach. It is my pleasure to introduce our expert speaker for today, Mr. David Landry, ThermTest's lead physicist. David's comprehensive knowledge and experience make him a leading authority in the field of thermal conductivity measurements. We'll have a Q&A portion at the end, so feel free to drop your questions in the chat box anytime, and David will provide the answers at the end. Without further ado, let's start. Over to you, David. All right, yeah, I'll just start sharing my screen here. I believe everyone should be able to see it now. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I'll just go right into things. As mentioned, I am David Landry, the lead physicist at ThermTest, and I'll be going over the transient line source and its uh, updated ASTM standard. So the overview of what I'll be going over is uh, first the TLS 100 millimeter probe uh, for all of our instruments. The samples that can be measured with that probe as well as the verification sample um, that's recommended. The measurements that get performed via our probe and electronics. Um, the critical change within the ASTM standard that was made in 2022 that required um, quite a bit of work to implement properly. And an example measurement and calculation that we performed earlier this year. We have the transient line source method that's been in use for over 60 years. And ThermTest's TLS probe was developed and released in 2016, along with its handheld source component. The method uses the same principles as the transient hot wire method. In the update in 2022, this is an absolute method requiring absolutely no calibration. In fact, it's required to be that way. And uh, because of the rugged sensor design, this method is suitable for lab or field testing. TLS 100 sensor. Uh, our TLS 100 sensor is 100 millimeters long, hence the 100 in the name, and two millimeters wide. It consists of a metal sheath that has those dimensions that is filled with mostly epoxy resin just to uh, facilitate thermal transport. There is power provided by a wire that runs the length of the test. Or the power is provided for the length of the test, but the wire runs the length of the needle. And its power gets provided by dual heating. Uh, whenever any current is run through it. The temperature during the transient test is measured at the center via a thermocouple. So on the right of the slide, we see ASTM's um, recommended or sample diagram of a needle, and we pretty much follow it exactly. Um, our wire might be of a different metal, but that would be the only change. And it's not one that matters. 
a sample suitable for testing with this method? I'm just going to get the whole screen here. Our uh, soils and uh, rocks as well. Um, ceramics like Makor and similar things. And then polymers like nylon, which will be on the lower end of the connectivity range. The connectivity range that it can measure is from 0 0.25 watts per meter Kelvin all the way up to 5 watts per meter Kelvin. So nylon is on the lower end of that range at 0 0.3 or so. And uh, some rock types or ceramics can reach the higher end of that range. The samples should be solid or loose solids, or they can be gelatinous, um, like the verification sample that gets recommended within the standard, um, which is water with agar powder mixed in. And this has a thermal connectivity of 0 0.606, which is uh, not in the middle of a, the connectivity range, is on the lower end, but it's um, a very central value for polymers and loose soils, which are common use cases. Um, and the final point about samples I'll make is that as of 2022, uh, one of the changes or the change meant that uh, the tests had to be longer in duration, which means that larger sample diameters are needed. And now samples need to have a minimum diameter of around uh, probably 40 millimeters. And this depends on the thermal diffusivity of the material. Measurements get performed with our probe and whatever electronics are attached by basically just sticking your sample into the, sticking your needle into the sample. And then the electronics provide a power for a duration of 180 seconds, a constant power for that duration, and the temperature gets recorded the whole time. Uh, the test power is 750 milliwatts or 1250 milliwatts uh, for lower connectivity samples or higher connectivity samples respectively. And because of the longer test durations, a wait time of 30 minutes is recommended. Um, we found that with less of a wait time, you'll get a consistent bias in your testing. Uh, so pictured is actually agar water with one of our TLS 100 needles. And testing something like this is very simple, as you can just stick your probe in there. Uh, but for solid samples, there needs to be a hole drilled in them, and then thermal paste gets used to reduce thermal contact effects. So, we come now to the ASTM standard and its changes that got made prompting this webinar and the update to our uh, calculation methods. So the standard is titled the standard test method for determination of thermal connectivity of soil and rock by thermal needle probe procedure. So nothing within the standard was changed except for two things. The previous standard accepted calibration, and it may have been required, but it may also not have been required. I don't recall. This calibration was to deal with um, short term effects of the sensor. Uh, the transient line source uses the transient hot wire uh, calculation method, as I mentioned before, which basically ignores 
all the imperfections created by the um, power or temperature source not being a perfect and infinite line. And because it accepted calibration, there was loose enough wording that basically any calculation method could be used as long as results were accurate. The updated version as of 2022 uh, very explicitly disallows calibration. And this means that your test duration has to be massively increased to remove the effects of the sensor. It restricts the calculation method to only um, two methods of calculation, a linear fit to the logarithm of time, a linear fit of temperature to the logarithm of time, or a nonlinear fit of temperature to the logarithm of an adjusted time where the time gets adjusted by a so-called time offset, which can be positive or negative. And this time offset helps overcome the effects of the sensor. And we have our example measurements on nylon. Now we're 700 750 milliwatts of power was provided by our uh, MP1. And the data was run through the analysis application. We can see that there's the 180 seconds of uh, test duration and the power goes up by nearly actually over eight degrees, which is on the higher end of what's acceptable. Um, because of sensor effects, we can't use the full range of the data. We start analysis only uh, after around 22 and a half seconds, which is, um, I think, one eighth of the test duration or something like that. We can see, or there's actually five measurements in here and they overlay almost exactly. And they all get run through the same calculation and get almost the same connectivity. The results then are a measured connectivity of 0 0.33 watts per meter Kelvin with a relative standard deviation of 1.2%, which is quite good. Um, the method in general has around 2% repeatability or better and 5% accuracy. The so-called known value that we use for this piece of nylon that we measured is 0.32 watts per meter Kelvin. And that's a difference of around uh, 3.3%. And not shown on the table is the measured time offsets, which were all around 0 0.1 seconds for different materials, particularly agar. This time offset can reach around one second or so, but it's never terribly large. So the TLS 100 millimeter sensor is available with the TLS 100, the MP2, the MPV, and the MP1, and all versions comply with the updated ASTM D5334 22A standard. That's quite a mouthful. Um, yeah, those are four different electronics and they all work the same with this probe. 
Results for thermal conductivity are absolute with no calibration required. Uh, so there's quite a bit of confidence with the results. We have good performance on the whole range of materials that I described earlier and excellent performance on the verification material, the agar water that gets described by the new standard, the updated standard rather. Thanks for listening, everyone. And are there any questions? I actually have a question, if you don't mind, David. Uh, do you know why the standards changed from allowing the calibration to not allowing it? Like, what was the reasoning behind that? Uh, I think it was that if a method could go without calibration, like this one, then it should go without calibration. OK, interesting. Sorry, I, I was curious. Does anybody else have any other questions? No, oh, I don't think we have any other questions today. But thank you so much for our webinar on new transient line source with David uh, Landry. There's a question from. Oh, question. I missed it. I apologize, David. I will let you take over. If you're using um, our instruments and purchased them prior to recently, then you can leave them as they are and test for 90 seconds. Uh, but you'll be following the uh, 2014 version of the standard. If you want to follow the 2022 version of the standard, I do recommend 180 seconds with our needles. Uh, with a different needle, then the test time could be adjusted. Does that answer it? Anyone else? Does anybody else have any other questions that they would like David to answer for them? I don't think so. I think we've uh, you got everything covered there and nobody has any questions right now, but if you think of any, just send us an email and we'll provide the answer as we can. Um, thank you, David, for taking time out of your busy schedule to provide this educational opportunity to understand the new transient line source. Uh, everyone, keep an eye on your inbox. We have some exciting webinars coming up within the next month or two, and I will have your webinar recording sent to your inbox within the next few days. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar, and if you have any questions, please send us an email at marketing at thermtest.com. Have a great day, everyone.